afternoon, everyone. How are you all today? Excellent. Well, it's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. We've already taken Jaw to the park, and I decided today what I want to do is I want to go to Holy Cross Cemetery, and I want to vlog someone's grave. I don't think I've actually ever been to this person's grave, but they have a really fascinating story. All the way from the time they were a little kid, we knew them, and we knew them all the way up until they were our lovable uncle that could turn on a light bulb with his mouth. Let's hit Holy Cross Cemetery. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Now there's a handful of famous people at this cemetery. Sharon Tate, Bill Lugosi, uh, Bing Crosby, Max Sennett. But today we're going to see Uncle Fester. Every time I come to this cemetery, I can't help but think of how it's not even like a block or two away from where Nirvana recorded the Smells Like Teen Spirit music video. All right, it's right here on the other side of these walls. Here it is, Holy Cross Cemetery. All right, let's make our way up. I love this cemetery, it's very beautiful. You know, I don't recognize this uh, this statue up here. Let's take a look at that. That might be kind of new. I don't think I've ever seen that. This is actually somewhat in the area that we're looking for. We're looking for section F. Here's the famous grotto section. Over here, a lot of Hollywood actors and famous people that you would come to see are over in this section. And I do think we're somewhat close because I noticed there aren't a whole lot of walkways around here and in the photos online of this person's grave that I was able to find, you could see the walkway in the background. Now today we're out here to see Jackie Coogan and like I mentioned, we knew Jackie Coogan as a kid literally because he was the kid from Charlie Chaplin's The Kid. He got his start in vaudeville. I mean, he was like an infant actor. He was even in movies and uh, Charlie Chaplin saw him performing vaudeville at the Orpheum Theater down in downtown. We've actually been by there. We've shown it in other vlogs. Saw him doing a dance at the time called The Shimmy and um, saw little Jackie imitating people on stage and Charlie loved that and so he uh, tried him out as a smaller part in one of his movies and then ended up making him the kid in the movie The Kid. Now this was kind of a big deal because Charlie Chaplin at the time had made his name um, with Max Sennett's company, had paid his dues and now had a a uh, film company that was willing to finance him to basically do everything. He was going to get to be the director and run the show and they signed him on for eight movies and when he was taking over two years to complete that um, initial contract they were getting worried and so Charlie invited them out to the studio to see part of the kid being filmed and to meet Jackie and Jackie charmed them with his little shimmy on the uh, on the grounds of the studio and they ended up saying okay well we love the kids so we know it must be worth it and so they kind of uh, chilled out a little bit on the uh, completion of the movie. That looks like he's probably over here. Poor Jackie. He had a lot of tragedy in his life. A lot of very peculiar instances and um, because of something that happened to him there was something that eventually came about called the Coogan Act. Well here he is. John Leslie Coogan. So he was the kid, and then about two years later, he became Oliver Twist. And he credited his acting ability from Charlie Chaplin. He said, you know, when we did the kid, I was a kid. I was five, six years old, and I had to cry on camera, and that's not an easy thing to do for anyone, especially, you know, a kid. And so he said, Charlie sat down with me. He said he was a marvelous storyteller, and he told me, exactly why it was important, what was going on in this moment, that his friend was being torn away, and why it was important that it, it mattered to the kid, to Jackie, and why he had to be broken up. And so he said, I really, really understood it. And then when it came time to film the scene, the tears just erupted. And sadly, I mean, he, he was a huge star for his day. He was one of the early people that they merchandised. Um, they said that they made, uh, they put him 
out there to advertise records and little figurines and peanut butter and different cereals and different things like that. And he was making $4 million a year at one point. Um, it, it just, it's unfortunate because his dad had always controlled his finances and in 1935 he and his dad and some friends were off on a dove hunting trip in Mexico and on their way back they got ran off the road um, by another car and the car went down an embankment and everyone died except for Jackie and his mother ended up marrying the family financial advisor and between the two of them they blew through all of Jackie's money all of it and so when I told you that there was something called the Coogan Act that was because Jackie had to go and sue his mother to get some of his money back in the end he only got $126,000 out of all that money he had made I mean he didn't sue her till he was in his mid to late 20s and uh, when she testified, she said, well, we never promised to give him any of it. it w he was a bad kid and he didn't deserve any of it. And so because of this, that's when they went about making the Coogan Act, which was basically a protection for um, child actors, stating that they could only work certain hours of the day under certain conditions and, um, and that their money had to be put in a fund away. Uh, so that they could have it when they became a legal adult and the family couldn't just go out and spend it all. Now, Jackie was not a great student. They ended up putting him into somewhat of a military school for much of his learning after the age of like 10 years old. He had been tutored up till then. Um, and then he actually went into the military because of that and served in World War II as a glider pilot and signed up for all the hazardous missions and was a big time World War II hero. So if you're wondering what feats of heroism Jackie performed in World War II, he helped get the British troops into India for one of their night missions. He also had his own radio show at one time and was in a movie with Betty Grable and ended up marrying Betty Grable for two years. Never would have guessed that, huh? <laughs>now beyond the tragedy of losing his father and losing all of his money he also went to college and he wasn't a great student there either and eventually left college but one of the friends that he made there um, was kidnapped and um, i guess the family of this this person named his friend brooke they owned the department store and brooke was kidnapped right out of the store and um, they tried to do a ransom for money um, and they only wanted $40. And um, they eventually found out that Brooke had been killed the night that they apprehended him um, or that they kidnapped him. And when the men, the two men who had done it went to trial and they were convicted, while they were waiting in a holding cell, um, it said that a mob broke in and stole these two men out of the cell, took them to a local park and lynched them. And, um, and it was said that Jackie was not only there, but that he was the one that held the rope while they did it. Jackie never really ever had the stardom he did when he was a kid. Once he came out of the war or anything, he was never a big time movie star. But he did a lot of bit stuff. He did a lot of um, guest appearances on the Andy Griffith Show and various things. But the one that always stuck out in my mind that I always remembered as a kid um, from his guest appearances was the time that he was on the Brady Bunch and that he was <laughs> pretending to have that neck injury where they had to prove that he was faking it and he had that whole um, <laughs> neck brace on and Mike ends up coming up with the idea of throwing the briefcase which makes him whip his head around and everything. But he was also, I think, probably the most notable thing he ever did. Like I said, he never really had any huge success in the movies when he came out of the military, but he did in TV because he was Uncle Fester for four years, four seasons of The Addams Family, and shaved head and all. He was our be beloved Uncle Fester who was creepy as could be, <laughs> but he, uh, he could put a light bulb in his mouth and turn it on and it just it was a really great show and I think that you know for most of an entire generation that's what they knew him for but he went back to 
all the way back to the late teens of silent movies, working with the great Charlie Chaplin and being Oliver Twist to start it all out. How cool is that? Now he was married four times and had four kids and sadly he didn't live a very long life. He passed away at the age of 69. But hey, you can do worse than being known as a humanitarian, patriot, and entertainer, right? I mean, not many people can say they married the woman with the most beautiful legs in the world, Betty Grable. They were in one of the greatest TV shows of all time, The Addams Family, and they were hand chosen to be the star of a Charlie Chaplin movie by Charlie himself, and maybe the most memorable of all, The Kid. Rest in peace, Jackie Coogan. John Leslie Coogan. Let's go over here and take a look at this statue. This is a great one. That is a white fish with blue and orange spots. Rad. Well, I think we're gonna call it a day here. All right, we're gonna do park visit number two, afternoon edition. We can go to Silver Lake Park, we haven't been there in a while. And here comes the Shakespeare Bridge. Whole lot cooler now that we've been to Verona. A little Shakespearean history. Cobwebs. Not too much happening here. Well, we're out of here. Think those two are connected in any way? Well, my friends, we're gonna call it a night. We'll end it just like we started it right here. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed getting to hear a little bit about the background to Uncle Fester, the real man, Jackie Coogan, who led a quite an extraordinary life. Have a great night and see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.